Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. Ito's been almost a week since Arataki Ito's release, and I've had some time to build and understand him at Constellation Zero. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how strong a peak potential free to play Arataki Ito can be. This is now the third video in my Peak Potential Free to Play series. You guys have overwhelmingly destroyed that like button for the other ones, so here is another one. And this one happens to be on our beloved one and only Arataki Ito. When I say Peak Potential, again, this is not for the faint of heart. This is for those hardcore free to play players that will end up min maxing their characters. Wildly enough, there are already Itos that are free to play and at my Itos level of power in this video. Peak potential free to play will primarily consider things that are free to play accessible. For weapons, this includes in-game guaranteed weapons like the craftable weapons and the event weapons, and this also completely excludes 5 star weapons. I will sometimes use common 4 star weapons like the Favonius weapons at refinement 1. And with the power of math, I also normalize my supports to a reasonable free to play level. By now, all of our accounts and experiences are so drastically different that it's impossible to say what a free-to-play player might have or might not have. Some of you even have a Constellation 5 Bennett with the Aquila Favonia, and others don't even have a Bennett. Next, let's take a look at my Arataki Ito's build. He will be using a Refinement 5 White Blind throughout this entire video. Since my Ito's talents are at 9, 8, and 9, a true peak potential free to play Ito will want to crown both his normal attacks and his burst. Crowning both of these will lead to an impressive 10% gain in damage in comparison to my Ito with his level 9, 8, and 9 talents. So in all honesty, your future peak potential free to play Ito is likely going to be stronger than mine is in this video. As for his artifacts, they are decent, I guess, providing around 200% total crit value. Full disclosure, I've spent 16,000 resin on the Husk of Opulent Dreams domain. However, I have been exceptionally unlucky with this domain. I've gotten 9 double crit defense percent timepieces for the Ocean Hue clan, and 0 for the Husk of Opulent Dreams. Sadly, I haven't gotten an upgrade for my Arataki Ito since 8,000 resin ago or so. Anyway, most of the time, you'll get artifacts at around this quality by the 10,000 resin mark, which is approximately 2-3 to three months of dedicated artifact farming. With all that being said and done, this puts my Arataki Ito at a very mediocre 69% damage potential for his Arataki Keisugiri combo damage, when compared to a damage maximized triple crowned Arataki Ito. As for his teammates, my Goro is at Constellation 0 with a level 8 elemental skill, and he is using a Refinement 1 Favonius bow. Meanwhile, my Bennett has a level 60 Lion's Roar, which puts him at par with a well-invested prototype Rancor free-to-play Bennett. And finally, my Ningguang has the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers and literally just random artifacts. Later in this video, I do showcase Arataki Ito with Albedo and Zhongli as well. Again, the goal of this video is to showcase how powerful, or I guess how weak if that's how you want to view it, a peak potential Arataki Ito is. Since I'm a whale, I'm able to rush to this power cap much more quickly than an actual free to play player can, so this is like traveling into the future for you to see just how strong your Ito can be if you put in the proper amount of dedication and farming for him. Let's finally get started by bashing my favorite volunteers, Plant Face In, the Cryo Regis Vine. We can see here that during Arataki Ito's burst, with nothing but Geo Resonance, and without any white blind stacks to start, Arataki Ito effortlessly disposed of the Cryo Regis Vine with plenty of time to spare on his burst. This is actually very impressive and is similar in power to my previous peak potential Raiden with max resolve. Next let's take this fight to something a little tougher, Super Masanori. If you fight Masanori during a specific time window, I think it's from midnight to 3 or 4 am, he goes super sane and becomes much more durable and much more dangerous. Oh. 
We can see that Ito flows fairly well from his first burst into his second burst, and since his team has three Geo characters, all generating Geo particles, Ito has some pretty good uptime on his elemental burst. And as usual with these videos, let's push his damage to the limit with a crit damage focus build and against the perpetual mechanical array. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Now with the comparatively trivial overworld stuff out of the way, it's time to see how our bad boy Ito performs in The Pound with a bunch of dogs, aka Abyss 12. Now now, you're probably thinking, I went to lose just going to use Ito against the rock doggos. Don't worry, instead we'll be using Ito versus the Electro doggos. That's right, we'll see how Ito does in the first half of Abyss 12, which also has Geo Vishaps, which by the way heavily resist Geo damage. Now, another full disclosure, I recharge my energy to full for each floor. As we can see, in this 12-1-1 demonstration, Ito is able to plow through our poor rock puppies with some time to spare at the end to smack the big rock doggos around for a bit. It's worth pointing out that Ito's amazing AoE allows him to reliably hit even these obnoxiously spaced out giant electro doggos. At 69% damage potential, with a very suboptimal team, it took this Ito 3 burst cycles and 60 seconds to clean out 12-1-1. 12-2-1 on the other hand has the dreaded Geo Vishaps, which have, I believe, 70% Geo Resistance. Thankfully, Geo Resonance reduces their Geo Resistance to 50%, but this is still way higher than most things you fight, which usually have somewhere around negative 15% to 10% resistance. By using their super armor against them, I take the opportunity to smack them for a while before finally knocking them back with his Kesagiri finisher. Remarkably, both the Geo Vishaps have already lost a huge chunk of their health by the end of Ito's first burst. Then it was simply a matter of filling up Ito's burst again to then smoothly take out the weakened, heavily geo resistant Geo Vishap. This Abyss's 12 3 is one of the hardest we've seen, and it has two very annoying robots as well as two very annoying giant electro doggos. Ito's first burst is able to take out the first two robots if the crab thing doesn't use its annoying shield. Now these two electro doggos aren't quite as simple as they have around 1 million hit points and they don't stay next to each other. As such it ended up taking a couple burst cycles for Ito to take them out, but still in an easily 3 starable 1 minute and 19 seconds. Now in the background I'll have Ito footage with a peak potential albedo from my previous video and a support zone Lee while I talk about Ito's performance. You'll notice just how much more powerful the team in the background is compared to the previous first half of Abyss 12's team. As we can see, Arataka Ito is currently a very powerful character even at Constellation Zero and with the very free to play friendly White Blind Playmore. Having absolutely no trouble dealing with the current most difficult content in the game and even with his suboptimal team. Once you slap Zhongli and Albedo into the mix, 
Ito becomes even more monstrous, having an insanely durable shield, crowd control, and a ton of additional damage from Albedo's blossoms. My advice for dedicated Ito mains is to go for Zhongli and Albedo if you don't already have them, and if possible, also go for Goro's constellations as these will all catapult Ito's performance well and above what was demonstrated in the first half of Abyss 12. All in all, I think Ito is an extremely fun and powerful character, but he is a character that requires a lot of dedication towards farming a great set of artifacts for, leveling up to 90 out of 90, and finally crowning some of his talents. If you want to use Ito at his best, be prepared to spend the next 2-3 months min-maxing everything about him. What did you think about Ito's performance in this video? I'm personally very impressed with his capabilities. My next video will be a DPS showdown between a Constellation Zero Ito, Constellation Zero Xiao, and Constellation 6 Noel. And let me know if you think that DPS Showdown should focus on free to play weapons like the White Blind and Black Glyph, or if I should use 5 star weapons like the Red Horn Stone Thresher and the Staff of Homa. Also, I regularly make Genshin Impact videos ranging from Caesar showcases, DPS showdowns, guide videos, and more. So be sure to smash the subscribe button as it's the best and easiest way for you to support my work. Also, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.